look shiny. You always look shiny. Tell me that. Shiny is a good thing. Shiny's good. And don't end. Are we still live? Yep. Oh, hey, we're still live. God, now we got like it's a bigger camera now. I know. Jesus, I, I don't know. I know. This is look at look at it looks like I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep because the squirrels didn't sleep last night. They wouldn't go to bed. So our local rant, and and uh um I do I I don't know, it's just something, it's a local rant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and this does go on to, in terms of all these different chemicals we just read, right? And and big pharma versus uh, community almost, right? So mm -hmm. what happened was I had to pick a lo loved one up from a uh, dental operation. And um, anyhow, um, apparently like the operation went well, but I went in to get her and I'll, I'll move into why I'm upset about this. But anyways, I went in to get her and she was so out of it. I have picked people up from other dental ops mm -hmm. and they were not out of it. It was uncomfortable. Okay. And I asked the nurse and everyone was very nice as in, you know, about whether, you know, people were formable or not. But the point is I said, what is this person on? And um, it was kind of... <sighs> not necessarily disclosed immediately, but she could tell from me knowing that this is not okay, that I was going to find out. And she said, oh, well, it's just, you know, a little bit of uh, fentanyl oh. and another part of uh, whatever, a painkiller concoction. And she saw my mouth drop, like it just dropped. Mm -hmm. And I think people, you know, in Thunder Bay know that we have an issue we have a we have an issue one and and in full disclosure i'm very upset about this they just pulled one of a very wonderful man out of, out of a house over overdose and a good person and i've been thinking about it for the last month i'm like how do these things like how is this happening in this community addictions uh addictions uh is a subject that but meanwhile Everywhere. i go in to pick up this young person mm -hmm who they did not ask whether they didn't disclose to her that they were going to give her fentanyl. They didn't disclose it. Nothing. There's all kinds since we have been doing these types of dental ops for how many years. And there are so many other types of um, painkillers that could be used. Why is the doctor giving fentanyl without proper disclosure? And then the nurse says, oh, well, don't worry. It's not like the amount they use on the street. <laughs> okay. And the reason that this goes into our conversation is because when we're talking about, oh, did you know sodium lauryl sulfate has, you know, all these different contaminants in it? It's not proper. It's not informed disclosure. No. Medical and, and I mean, I believe it's just my opinion and I have no, no basis on research or anything it's just what i read um there's definitely an epidemic here for sure and and you see it you see it all over social media people passing away overdosing and it's always there is always the same word involved in every one of them so and so od'd on fentanyl right it, it, every od has the word fentanyl beside it or in the same paragraph so obviously it's a it's definitely a huge epidemic and where does it come from same thing as back in the day with Percocets. Where did it come from, right? Where did all this stuff come from when, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, my grandparents were telling me stories that if you were sick, they'd give you heroin. So it just seems to be a progression. And the drugs are getting a lot more dangerous, deadly, I guess you can say. <clears throat> well, I called the office. I, I called the office. I'm like, you gave a young person a highly, and they don't, 
they don't tell you the side effects. And this is the same thing about products. They don't tell you the side effects. And in fentanyl, most common is chest pain or discomfort, difficult or troubled breathing, irregular, fast or slow, shallow breathing, lightheadedness, dizziness, fainting, pale blue lips, fingernails or skin, severe muscle stiffness, slow or irregular heartbeat, unusual tiredness, blurred vision, change in consciousness, chills, confusion, cough, difficulty, swelling, fast heartbeat, feeling cold, heartache, headache, hives, itching, skin rash, inability to move eyes, inability to sit still, tightness in the chest, uncontrolled twisting, unusual facial expressions. And then there it goes on bleeding, blistering, burning, coldness, discoloration of the skin, increased sweating, redness of skin, vomiting, welts, blah, 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 blah. Do you think, and, and, and it's highly addictive because of its potency. Do you think in that somewhere between doctor and, and, and uh, client, they would have said, Hey, do you, would you sign off on taking this highly potent, highly addictive uh, painkiller that has all these side effects when we have other ones that we have been using for a long time? Like th- there seems to be a disconnect there. I, I, and I'm wondering where's the source? Well, well, I mean, is it, there's a whole lot of questions about it. Is it cheaper to get? Is it cheaper to use? I mean, are they getting paid to use it? Uh, like the next thing, right? it should be outlawed in, in Northwestern Ontario at this point. It, it's not very, given to young people without even disclosure. There, there's clearly a problem with it. Like it, 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 people are dying like crazy and it's not even about whether they're an addict or this and that. It's just plain and simple. You take it, you die. That's the, that's what I'm reading. That's there's no coming back from it unless you get Narcan, but that's a whole other subject and issue. I mean, it comes from the top, comes from big pharmacy, right? I mean, they obviously make it, manufacture it, synthetic, whatever they do. And then maybe the doctors are getting kickbacks from, from prescribing this stuff, right? So- well, I asked, I asked the office, I'm like, do you realize we have a problem in this city? Is right. there anything, any bells go off there that maybe we shouldn't give this young person a undisclosed painkiller that's highly addictive? What do you think we're supposed to do to take power back over our community? Because I don't know, like this just happened to me. So I am so not happy about it. I wouldn't be happy either. And I, I mean, for my kids, I'd probably advocate the same thing. Like, I don't want any fentanyl. I don't want this. I mean, if they're in pain, there's there's other ways to manage it, right? There's back in the day, you got your morphine, you got your whatever, whatever. Well, this was a young, young adult. So I wasn't, you know, I'm not able to be, I wasn't in that room. I said, I would do the picking up, right? Maybe informed, maybe informed. I know when uh, I uh, had my accident on my side by side, uh, four ribs broken in a collapsed lung, they kept giving me, I can't remember what it was. um, It's in the hospital for three days. It wasn't fentanyl. It was something else. It was uh, like a synthetic, but it was, it did work. It did take the pain away. But then you start running through your mind. Am I going to be addicted to this? Am I going to need this? Am I going to, you know, am I going to need this to survive any little, any little boo-boo or scratch? People are running to the doctor. I want this and I want that. Could be for a number of reasons. Who knows, right? It's definitely wrong to, uh, to, you should, as a patient, you should be informed of what they're going to give you. Now, if you come in on a stretcher, lifeless, whatever, you don't really have a say in the matter. They're going to do what they can to save you. I guess you flip of a dime or a flip of a quarter. Whether you're going to come out, I need this stuff. Do I need this stuff? Do I need this stuff? Well, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what do you, what do you think? What, what do you think our next step is as a community? Like, I don't have the answer. I'm sitting here thinking, so I have doctors handing out highly addictive substances to young people without full disclosure, with no informed consent. Yep. And that's happening right now when we're in a city with that is in crisis. We are in crisis. I've lost a loved one in the last two months. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a crisis. And I'm just only, saying from the child and youth worker standpoint, you know, what, what do we do? Eh, what do we do as a community? You open up the, the gates will flood for sure, because now you have harm reduction in the city and you have places where you can go inject and it's, there's no consequence for it. Um, there's definitely an epidemic. How do we fix it? I mean, I, I hear it all the time. Well, maybe, you know, the, the city council and the mayor and the police force should step up and do more. Well, I mean, they have a different aspect where they're 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 targeting the where it's coming from, right? So they're trying their best. They're doing what they can. I mean, you got you got different people coming from different cities to a to the center of northern Ontario, right? This is the hub, Thunder Bay. You know, you have uh, 
the addiction rate is high. You have so many different communities coming to Thunder Bay. You have so many different people coming. I mean, look, last week, for example, there was the big shootout over in Westport, right? Like it's, it's, I have no idea. I don't even, wouldn't even know where to begin. I mean, that the laws have to be tougher. Number one. Well, there's no accountability. There is no accountability in whatever we call this Canada corporation. There's no accountability for corporations. None. Zippo. Nothing. There's Hydro one to flipping, you know, the big pharma. There is no accountability. They do whatever they want. They harm whoever they want. And I just don't know how we're supposed to take our communities back. Because, you know, I'm lucky my loved one doesn't have a problem. But the point is, the whole situation is a problem. That's right. And 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 she was upset. She was like, I would not have chosen to have felt like that. Yeah. And it, it, you can see it clear as day, right? It definitely, it definitely, something's wrong. Somebody, when they take fentanyl, there's, there's a change for sure, right? Whether you're extremely high. It's doctor sourced. Yep. And- so like, how do we hold, we've got to hold our doctors accountable. I, I I don't know which direction we're going, but this is just me saying this is my rant. I would and like to I would like to see I would like to see the books on how much a doctor gets a kickback mm. from prescribing this stuff, right? Like there's gotta be some accountability if I mean and then it's hard. It, you're in a society where it, I don't even know like that leads into such a bigger subject, right? Like back in the day you were old school ways, as you say, the old school. It wasn't it was still there, just not as prominent now because of social media right the I'm, I'm sure back in the day there was people that would need the 60s 70s 80s <laughs> excuse me now it's you you read it on facebook you read it on instagram there's somebody always posting something or you you're more prevalent to what's going on and it's it, it's just a change of times right like it's it's I think we need to take power back over our communities. I don't disagree. And, and I, I don't know. How, we need to hold we need to hold those that are so, the source accountable. It, it, you can hold them accountable for as long as you want. But when they go to court and they're released back out on two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars about the doctors. Oh, do you think like I, I don't even know what the first step with that of that is? Is is there a public we can do a uh, um, public freedom of information? request i i have no idea well we're gonna have to come back to that yeah i I would i would think but once again it it comes down to your privacy it's your money right nobody can go access my information how much i make a year unless i tell them well actually though if you're on well maybe not doctors but public servants you (laughs) just don't have any aware you can find out (laughs) see that's the stuff that i don't know right like i I, the fact that i know (laughs) yeah but how do you how do you hold a doctor who is prestigious in the community, in 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 the eyes of the community, right? A doctor is mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. way up there, right? So how do you hold that accountable for them doing their job when their patient says, I'm in pain all the time? Well, I can take your pain away, but these are going to be the consequences. So, you know, there's also that aspect of choice. I'd love to know the kickbacks because there's a whole other options of choice, uh, especially because, you know, um, she was quite vocal about feeling concerned about the painkillers. Oh, well, let's just drop some fentanyl then. Yeah, we did. Anyhow, moving on from that. um, Oh, before before you, I just, once again, my TikTok knowledge is coming in. (laughs) They just, didn't Pfizer just lose a lawsuit for something ridiculous, like $2.3 billion? Oh, just add it on to it. Add it on to their list. Do you know how many times that company has been sued for billions, billions, like from Africa to the U.S.? That company has been uh, it's been a very long mm-hmm. list of lawsuits. So what happened? Where's the where's the accountability for that? Right. Like, where is are they going to have to pay all that money out? Well, they probably could. They've made billions. Exactly. But. Right. So it. You find them, hurt them in the pocketbook, but then they just turn around and make triple the amount. It's, it's, I, uh, this is why I'm saying maybe it's got to come back to community grassroots movement and taking power back over over your your health and your body and and uh, asking for proper informed consent. Just mm-hmm. like our fun little, you know, guess that uh, chemical podcast. Mm-hmm. Lots of people do not realize. You know, so just within education, you're taking power back over what no goes idea. on and in your body. I have had no idea. No idea that those chemicals were in yeah. the stuff I use. Yeah. No idea. And then it's it's the self-worth to say, no, thank you. 
<laughs> yeah. No merci. Not, not participating. <laughs> now I got to go buy some hottie bomb soap because yeah. good for me. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll revisit this somewhere down the line. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there something that you feel is necessary to communicate to our general community about life, the galaxy, and the great beyond? <laughs> <laughs> It's just my opinion and my thoughts, right? Like there's, I mean, do that's I like- That's what we're here for. That's it's right. Like sharing love, our opinions and thoughts. I love to- Even if nobody wants to know them, Jason. <laughs> I love to uh, I love to drive around, listen to my music, and I, and I see it. I see it all over the place. I drive down certain areas of the city. I see people flailing in the middle of the road. I see, mm. you know, the younger generation. I mean, no, this is just my thoughts and opinions. I feel they're maybe a little soft, right? And they 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 get things handed to them and- back in the day when you had to work sweat you know to get what you wanted i mean i don't know there's so much in this world today that it makes my tum my stomach turn but there's also good in this world right i see lots of good things i see lots of good things on tv people helping everybody people helping animals all the all the good things that go with it so are we a lost society no i don't feel i don't think we are i don't feel that way i just difference of difference of old school and new school, right? Like there's always going to be that clash and you can't, and there's so many hot topics in the world today. You could spend 10 hours talking about them and rile people up and get them all mad. And it, it, <laughs> Well, how do you get through your day though? Like what is something that, that you bring to your day when you, we know we have the hot topics, we have all these things going on. We have life in general. What, what's something that you do I try to, to make well, it into the next? I try to be positive. Like I try to, you know, sometimes in my job, you, you got to, how do I say this delicately? I mean, if they're not cutting the mustard, then you got to put them somewhere else. And that's got to be deflating for someone trying to get into, you know, operating a piece of equipment and and they're just not getting it right. Like they, they're doing, being unsafe and they're not following directions. And, you know, you have to find that balance and, and still treat them with respect and dignity and say, Hey, like, you know, maybe we can try something else with you. But for now, I don't feel that you can operate this machinery in a safe, productive manner. It sounds like being kind, <laughs> good to your neighbor, treating yeah. people with how you want to be treated. To a point. And then mm -hmm. you get you get the people that, that want to be standoffish and the hair on their neck wants to stand up and they want to, you know, they want to try and be the alpha male and... Yeah. Like I'm too old. Back in the day, 20 years ago, okay, it's on, it's go time. Now it's, you know, I can't be bothered. Like, you know. I kind of feel we could change the description of the podcast to like, we gather here to figure yeah. out what in the name of the Alpha and Omega is going on. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I see, I see silly things every day, especially in my line of work. I see things that just make me like, why, why am I existing right now? <laughs> There's been many times I just go sit in my truck and roll up the windows and have about eight smokes and four coffees and contemplate how I'm not going to, you know, get out and check my hard hat somewhere or, or even the people I work with too, right? Like, I mean, some, I work with some of the most amazing people and, and they all bring something different, different attitudes, different outlooks, different everything. It, it's fun, right? It's fun to work in that diverse. So I think what chaos. you're saying is. Keep on rolling around the next turn yeah. because there's going to be some fun down the road somewhere. And we got to just. It's hard to explain. Michelle. You know, walking me, forward, you know, me outside of this, right? Like you, be, we've been to the, we've been to the bar many times. The Wayland. <laughs> the Wayland. Yeah. You, you now see me. you can find the Wayland as a sponsor. <laughs> you, you see me uh, like, you see how I am out, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm my, myself personally, I'm more of a protector, right? I'm watching over everybody. So if somebody gets into trouble, then it's like, okay, well, I'll sit down and we'll just let this pass. And if it continues and, you know, you get, get your, you know, your hair up and your chest out and start beating it like a big modern day gorilla. And <laughs> so, <laughs> right. But I, I wrapping it up, <laughs> wrapping it up and bring her, bringing it home, bringing it home. Um, I think, I think probably me, do you feel you got some of your male perspective? Do you feel that's a question for you? Do you feel like it, 
Well, I know what I think. I'm asking you. Everybody, everybody gets to hear about what I think. Ah, beauty is for me, beauty is it's not what's on the outside. There's lots on the inside too. There's there's attitude, it's personality. You know, if you if you have similar interests, the you can look past the the I don't even know what the word I'd be looking for. The uh, celebrity structure of slight with long hair, symmetrical face. And yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, relatively like, under 30 and under, you know, like a, like a JLo or, you know, mm -hmm. realistically, that's never going to happen. Right. Like that's not, well, they can be really annoying too. And you can find, <laughs> you can find what society says as, as drop dead, gorgeous, beautiful, you know, no wrinkles, tight, whatever, whatever you want to say. But for the most part, it's if you're got a really shitty attitude and you treat people bad, it, odds are if I see you getting hurt, I'm probably just going to walk by and laugh like that kind of mentality. Right. Whereas if you're a generally caring person, I'm not saying you have to be Mother Teresa or anything like that. If you're just generally, oh, thank God, a, yeah, a, a caring person, and 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 you don't want to see ill will on people, then if you're in trouble, I'm probably going to stop and help you. It's just my nature, right? I am. I mean, I'm described as a protector through and through, right? I mean, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I'm I'm above average size, right? And and not saying that I'm the strongest guy in the world either, but. Do you feel confused about your maleness? Sometimes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. What does that look like? Uh, if I get on a, like, let's use the construction site for an example, right? It's, it's the, the male to female worker ratio is males are always higher for some reason, right? And I can never figure it out because some of the best operators I've ever seen have been female. They take the time. They want to learn. They're, they pay attention to detail, right? Now you get into a construction site and it's all... <laughs> right? Like it, it's what it is, it, 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 it's, you know, but some of my greatest ideas have come from on the construction site, right? Like it's, it's, it's mind boggling how diverse and, and egotistical driven it is to, holy shit. Like you just said something that made me stop and think about treating people or other than that. And it's mind boggling. Some of the people I work with is, I don't even know how they're still alive, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's gonna, okay. We have to sorry. do one last thought. Don't apologize because Michael is giving me the eye. Okay. I'm so, <laughs> so let's just say um, one last thought on the male perspective. If you could sum it up in like one sentence, get to know people. Get Ooh, to, that's good. Just get to know people. You, you, you can't listen to what other people say about mm -hmm. someone because that's their truth and their past mm -hmm. and their experience. That's, that's not your experience. That's not who you are or what mm -hmm. you think. Somebody tells me what to think. Pretty sure they're getting, you know, getting something. Get get to know. Yeah, get, get to, know to know someone people. for yourself. Get to I, know I like that. That's a that's a good note. That's mm -hmm. a good note to to end on. Um, Jason, thank Michelle? you so, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. It's my pleasure. Me on this. I gotta find my out out throw, but I don't I don't even know where where to go. And and I actually have to find it. I don't there know. we go. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jason, <laughs> for joining us on True Beauty Confessions, where we do the dirty work to clean up our beauty vibe. If you like this content, subscribe or let us know what you want to know about. We want to hear from you. And for more info on moi, you can go to BEE23.ca. And that's it. It's a wrap. Or you can find her at the Wayland on Saturday nights. Just saying.